Hey, welcome to Dan Harsh and Associates, five steps to improve sales. We are on step four in our five step video series. In today's video, we're going to be talking about placing the right people in the right positions. If you've been following along in sequence, you've gone through our first three steps, define your sales goal. We talked about how to create an effective sales strategy and structure. We talked about how to create our messaging and our channels and our value proposition. Today, we're talking about placing the right people in the right position. And then our last video will be making CRM an integral part of your process and your structure. All the links to every one of these videos is down below. If you haven't watched these and this is your first one, you can watch them in any order that you want. If you find a topic that's important to you, you can jump right into that. They, they do not have to be watched in order. So let's get into today's video, placing the right people in the right positions. People are the key. If you're a manager, you're a business owner, you're executive, you've managed people, you understand this. People are the key. When it comes down to it, everything we do does center around people. Even, even in the areas where we have lots of automation, back-end processes, workflows, we still have to have people that are managing those. We have to have people that are creating those, people who are uh, developing that, coming up with the strategy for those, the ideas for those. So at the end of the day, people are the key to everything we do. And we understand that when you have the right people, things just seem to go a little easier. So let's talk about this a little, little more detailed. Let's talk a little bit about good employees. Good employees do good work all the time. They're just good performers. They're not inconsistent. They're not up and down. They just continually perform at a high level. You give them a goal, they're generally hitting it. And if they don't hit it, they're very close to it. They don't give excuses, reasons for. They just, they just come to work and they do their job and they do it very well. They're creative. They're able to do more. They generally will outperform the bad employees. They're ambitious, they're self-driven, they're self-managed. If you're a manager or have managed people, you understand the value of not having to babysit an employee. You understand the value of somebody coming to you and telling you what they're doing and what they're going to do and bringing new ideas to you and better ways of doing things. You like those employees you don't have to manage. Those are the employees you want to support more and more. Those are the good employees. Good employees are honest. They're dependable. They have positive attitudes. Good employees will influence those around them. They'll raise the bar for those or of those around them. They're team oriented. They're proactive. They don't sit back and wait for you to give them something to do. They're always looking ahead. They're making good decision. They have good discernment. They don't sit back and wait to do something. They look at what needs to be done, and they do that. I'm not sure there's anything here that I've shared that you would sit back and say, man, I, I wasn't aware of that. Now, I think you're probably aware of all of this. However, the reason that I'm starting this video off with identifying some of the characteristics of good employees is to make sure that I'm raising the awareness or the value of putting good employees, the right employees, in the right positions. If these are the characteristics, the benefits of a good employee, all the more reason we should be placing value on making sure we're putting the right people in the right positions. So why do we have wrong people in the wrong positions? What has happened if we saw, if those are the, va the reasons for the, or the value of good people in the right position, why don't we just do that all the time? Well, there's lots of reasons why we may have the wrong people in the wrong position. 
A big one, I think, is loyalty, friends and family. You may have promoted somebody because you knew them, you were a friend, they were family, uh, they had worked with you a long time, and you promoted them because you were loyal to them and they were loyal to you. Loyalty is a very good thing, but loyalty doesn't mean they're going to be a good manager. Loyalty doesn't mean they're going to fit in this position. Loyalty means they're loyal. Don't take loyalty beyond what loyalty is. Loyalty is a great thing. I think managers and business business owners would love to have a staff of employees that are loyal. But just because they're loyal doesn't mean they're a good fit for any position you may put them in. You may also have people in wrong positions because you dislike confrontation or one of your managers like dislikes confrontation and therefore we or they don't address a wrong person in the wrong position they let it ride because they just don't want to ruffle feathers and they don't like having that confrontational meeting perhaps it was a poor judgment it was just a bad hire from the start we should have never hired or promoted that individual. I think a common one is we promote somebody on the belief they will grow into it. We think they have the characteristics to do the next position, therefore we hire them. We believe they will change. We understand the shortcomings they have, but we believe they will change when they get this opportunity We think, they think, oh, this is the opportunity I'm waiting for, therefore I'm going to change now. And so we believe they'll grow into the position. We promote on tenure. Tenure, like loyalty, is a great thing. Tenure is an awesome characteristic. But tenure doesn't mean they're a fit for wherever we put them. Tenure means they're a tenured employee. They've been here a long time. They are probably loyal. They are probably a very good employee, but a very good employee doesn't mean you're going to be a very good fit for this position. It means you're a very good employee. My job is to find the right position for you. Another common reason we may have the wrong people in the wrong position is we don't have a backup plan. So therefore, we fear making a decision. We fear pulling that individual out because I don't have a backup plan. I fear that I'll be in worse shape by making a decision because I don't have a plan in place right now to backfill it. So I allow it to continue on. A last one could be we underestimated the role. We really didn't put the value on the role that it, that it needed, and therefore we put somebody in the position that really wasn't up to par because we didn't really understand or we underestimated the role. And now that we have somebody in the position that is not ready to do that position, we see the ramifications of the wrong person in the wrong position. So there's lots of reasons why we may have the wrong person in the wrong position. Let's talk a little bit about the impact of having the wrong person in the wrong position. And if you're a manager or you're an entrepreneur, you will relate to this because you've been there. One, there's a huge financial impact, a negative financial impact when you have to replace somebody. To rehire somebody is very, very costly. We have lost productivity. We have financial costs. We have to, at times, go back to customers and tell customers that we're assigning somebody new to their account. It could be a serviceman. It could be a salesperson. It could be a manager, whatever it may be. There's a lot of costs involved in having to replace an individual because it was a wrong hire. There's also negative impact on other managers and the staff. If we have a wrong person in a wrong position, even while they're in the position, we're probably offloading tasks to other managers because they're not able to pull their own weight. 
And then when we make the change and we have to replace them during that downtime, we're offloading tasks to other managers or other staff members. And so there's a huge negative impact on, on the peers, our staff, our other employees, and the culture. There's negative impact on customers. We talked about that. It weakens our hiring reputation. If this is something you are doing regularly, people begin to wonder, are you even capable of hiring the right individual? So there's a lot of negative impact and, and, and negative consequences for hiring the wrong people and placing the wrong people in the wrong positions. Let's talk about some things we can do, some tips to place the right people in the right positions. One thing we can do is we can invite that individual in to an internal brainstorming session. Bring them in prior to the hire and let them sit in and be part of a brainstorming session with other managers. Let's see how they carry themselves. Let's see how they interact. Let's see the things they share. Let's see how they're perceived by people they will be working with. Let's see if they can handle themselves at this level. Put them in a real life situation and let's see how they do. I think during the interview process, we can focus on asking real life questions. Put them in a real life situation of the position that you're interviewing for and let's see how they respond. Ask them, hey, how would you handle this situation? You're looking for thought process. You're looking for logical rationale. You're looking for experience. Have they been there, done that? I think another thing to do is during that interview, we don't want to focus a lot on their past. Their past is the past. We want to talk about that stuff kind of briefly because the past, it's it's in the past. I'll learn a little bit about what they've done, but I really want to talk about is where are they at today? What, what are they capable of today? Have multiple interviews. Interview them inside the office. Interview them outside the office. We've had tremendous success on interviewing people in the office and then doing a follow-up interview outside the office. When you get them outside the office, they tend to let their guard down a little bit. They become a little less formal. They begin to share a little bit more about their personal life, their family, their interests, their hobbies. Excuse me. You get to know them a little bit better. You get to see maybe a a little different uh, perspective of them. So don't interview everything inside your office. Try to put them in different environments so you can see them under different situations. Share with them what they don't see. If this is somebody you're talking to internally and they're hiring for a job, they may only see what they see from their chair, from their cubicle, from their seat. Share with them the things they don't see about the position that they're hiring for. Share with them the extra hours that they're going to have to put in. Share with them how some of their weekends may be disrupted. Share with them the added stress, the added accountability levels that come with the next position. Get a read from them. Are they up for that type of a challenge? Does this position that they're interviewing for, does it align itself with their aspirations? Where do they want to go? When you ask the question about, tell me a little bit about where you'd like to be a year or two from now. And you hear that canned, well, you know, I want to grow with a company and I'm not even sure they know where they want to go. I think it's important that you make sure that the position you're hiring for aligns itself with the aspirations of the person you're interviewing. If not, it will probably be a short lived situation because they're probably not going to like it. One way you can align people in positions is through 
assessment tests, personality tests, profile tests, and there's a lot of them out there, and a lot of them are very good. Uh, I've taken a lot of the tests, and for the most part, they've been fairly accurate. Um, there's one in particular that I that I seem to have liked maybe more than others. It's called DISC, D-I-S-C. Um, that seems to be a pretty good one, but there's a lot of them out there. Have them take a, an assessment test, a, prof, uh, a personality test, a profile test. See if their characteristics, if their personality aligns with the position, aligns with your company, aligns with the culture. Promote based on stress management. What do I mean by that? Once again, if it's this is a, an internal um, candidate that you're interviewing for a position, how have they demonstrated their ability to manage stress. You've seen them for a while now. They've worked inside your organization. How have they handled stress? If they haven't handled it well, if you've seen them get very emotional or a little irate or go off the handle, that's probably going to be exasperated in the new position. So don't think they're going to change once they get the new position. Promote time management. How have they done in the past when you give them tasks to do? Do they get it done? Do they get it on, done on time? Do they go above and beyond? What about accountability, consistency? Do they show up for work on time? Don't think they're going to change once they get the new position. They may change briefly, but what you've seen over the last X months, years, that's probably who they are. And that's who will ultimately come out in the end is the real them. Promote self-starters. People that you've seen that are that are driven, that they have ambition. Promote on by based on people you know that are going to be a fit in the culture. So there's a lot of things we can do that maybe we're not doing now that can help us increase the odds of placing the right person in the right position. As we talked about, people are key. We went through a lot of benefits of placing the right person in the right position. If those benefits are true, it's worth our time and our effort and the cost to get the right person in the right position. Take a step back, evaluate how you've been doing that in the past, and if you have the wrong people or a wrong person in wrong positions. Sit back and determine how am I going to address that. It's not going to improve. You got to get the right people in the right positions. The right people in the right positions will move the needle forward. That's what we're looking for. You may move a person out of one position because they're not a fit and move them into another And they may be like a hand and glove fit. It could be a perfect fit. So just because the person isn't a fit does not mean they're not a fit in the organization. It simply means they're not a good fit today for the position that they're in. Your job as a manager, your job as an owner, as a business executive, is to make sure that you're capitalizing on people's strengths. Get them in the right positions so they can succeed, they can excel, because if they do, you will benefit from that. And you have a responsibility to do that. You have a responsibility to find good positions for them. And you have a responsibility to pull people out of positions that they're not a good fit for. So that kind of wraps up step five, or step four rather, in our five-step video series on how to improve sales. We've gone over four steps now. We've defined the sales goal. We've created an effective sales strategy. We've defined our messaging and our channels. And now we just talked about placing the right people in the right position. The last video in our five-step series is making CRM an integral part of our sales process and structure. Once again, there's links to all five of these down below. Feel free to click on those. Hey, thanks for uh, watching this video. I look forward to seeing you on video five. Take care.